Welcome beginner artist to Monet Cafe Studio. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through the basics of painting a beautiful floral landscape in soft pastel. I'll guide you through core painting principles such as composition, color temperature, and the importance of value. I'll also teach you the importance of an easy underpainting that's going to be a great foundation for your painting. So this is kind of like a soft pastel 101 course for you. I will give you so many tips and and recommendations to begin your pastel painting journey. So what are you waiting for, beginner artist? Let's dive right in. Hello, artistic souls, and welcome to Monet Cafe Studio. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I focus primarily on the medium of soft pastels, but my lessons really go across all different mediums. But the medium of soft pastels is just so beautiful, so vibrant, full of color, user-friendly, so beware, you might just fall in love with this medium if you hang out on my channel very long. But this month we've been focusing on painting fields. I called it fields of grace and just beautiful fields with distant flowers and bathed in sunlight. And so far this month, I've focused on probably a skill level between medium and advanced. And I always like to bring something for the beginner artist. So in today's lesson, I'm going to take a basic, very simplified landscape of a field and I'm going to break it down into some easy to follow principles with some of my tips and tricks and techniques for painting in general. So if you're a beginner artist or beginner to intermediate, I think you're really going to learn a lot and I'm excited to bring this lesson to you. All right, get ready. Here we go. All right, let's talk about this reference image. It has some strengths about it that I wanted to point out. One is it has the horizon line in the upper third rather than halfway. Uh, many times when someone starts out with photography or painting, just take a beach sunset. You would put the sun right in the middle or if the sun's in the beach landscape, you line it up where the sun is right here. And for some reason that is not artistically visually pleasing. We're drawn more to things like in the thirds, upper third, lower third, or um, a focal element in a third rather than a half. And I think, I'm not gonna get too deep on you here. If you've been on my channel long, you know I'm just a sold out believer in the Lord, but there's something about the number three, even color in art, not just composition, color is broken down into three colors of the colored wheel. Even if you're talking about additive or subtractive light, and I could go very deep into that topic, but I won't, but there's just something about a horizon line that's in the upper third. So keep that in mind when you're doing a composition. You can basically just divide your canvas um, or painting surface in thirds, you know, divide it twice here and twice here. And you would put a subject matter more in a third um, intersection than you would in a half or in the middle. And so I'm gonna focus on that a little bit as I'm painting and um, kind of tweak this reference image too. I'm first just starting out with just a simple piece of sketch paper. And this is a piece of willow charcoal. It's just a long stick of charcoal. You can either get willow or vine charcoal. And I find it just helps me to be more sketchy and artistic rather than a pencil. Also, I will primarily be keeping my hand to where I can let my, my uh, drawing utensil flow rather than cinching up. This is often how we start as beginner artists. Sorry for the shadow here. I can't get around it. Um, so this will create tight lines. We want this to be very loose and free like this field. So one thing you can also do is if you take a reference image, it sounds funny to say this, but sometimes you can see things better when they're smaller and you shrink it down to a little thumbnail image. You can sometimes identify your values better and the composition. So what I can see by squinting my eyes and just by doing this for years and years, don't think this comes immediately, is I can see, again, my strong points. I'll first, uh, let me start here. I might paint left and right handed here. Um, so let's just get a general uh, landscape composition here. Landscape is when it's wide and um, portrait is when it's vertical. So here's our landscape uh, image. Mine might be a little smushed here. Um, but we've got our third right here, um, general horizon line, kind of in the third. And you can already see um, the big shapes here. You see these big shapes of the tree line and they're kind of coming into a V right here. We've got kind of one, one grouping of trees on this side, kind of makes like a little triangle shape. 
and a grouping of trees on this side here. Now we've also got these flowers. Now this is a little subtlety. Let me put this up here like this. This might be a little subtle when you're first painting, but I can squint my eyes real hard and see that there's a mass of darkness in this foreground that's darker than the flatter area in the distance. So that's another general shape here. And what I'm gonna do is I want to uh, create a composition, again, already a strong point with the third. I wanna create a composition that really just draws this viewer in. This is already working to do that. It's called convergence. I always call it pointing. It's elements that are um, pulling the viewer to a certain area. So that's already working but we can accentuate that even more. I'm seeing this dark, dark area, kind of like right in here. It's, it's definitely all in here, but I'm gonna accentuate that by drawing the viewer in to even pull them into this uh, distant area in the back here, okay? So we've got kind of a wide uh, path here um, of darkness that gradually is gonna get a little lighter as we go into the distance, but there'll be an underlying shadow underneath there. So we've got, a shape here of the sky, a shape here of this tree um, mass, this tree mass here, a dark area, and then a middle ground with these grasses here. And I'm also going to show you with um, color principles, uh, value and color principles, how we can even change things from there. Again, you can paint it exactly as it is if you like, but why not learn a few rules to make it more dramatic? One thing I know that I'm going to do, uh, remember how I mentioned thirds being more interesting? So we've got our third horizon line. This area of the convergence is almost in the middle. You see that? And I'm going to push that to where it's more in a third or not in the middle. So I'm going to make this tree grouping here um, a little bit shorter here. I'm going to make this tree grouping come in here. And I'm going to push my um, maybe some more distant trees here and make this area more in this side where uh, there's more interest there. And it's further away with perhaps a cooler color. I'll talk about those principles as I paint. Um, so that's going to make it even stronger. We've got uh, visual interest pulling in, leading into the painting. We've got compositional elements working. And we're also going to use some of these flowers to do a little more focal point work for us. Some of them are already so beautiful. I like how these are, are coming in, um, kind of reaching this way. And you need a few random ones too. Um, we've got a nice little grouping right here of some flowers. And um, I, like, I like the flowers even to point. Again, not all of them, but uh, I like a random one that comes up kind of like this one, even into the tree line. Um, and often that's where they show up even more because we're gonna have this nice, light yellow on top of the dark tree line. And so I'll probably pull one of them up randomly here. Some of these are already peeking up. We might have a few more up a little bit this way. And they're all kind of leading the viewer in. And I believe a strong composition uh, isn't overloaded with focal points. We're gonna have a few of our elements that get the major attention with focal points. And the rest of the elements are really just supporting characters. All right, so let's do a little bit more here. So here is, if I was to do this on here, what I would do is, is bring my, my tree line is going to be more like right in here. And uh, another thing too is keep it simple. We're gonna stay very basic with our shapes. Um, we don't want to get uh, too carried away too soon. I do like how this kind of starts right here and comes down. And then we've got a few trees that are really large shapes right in here. And then they get um, gradually just a little bit smaller here. And this is where I said I was going to have probably, I'll probably have my most distant area here. These will probably end here. And I might have a few little tree shapes here that it feels like it's in levels. So how am I going to do that? Well, when things are perpendicular to the land, okay, so they, uh, any element that's upright, like trees, um, they're going to be darker in value. So let's talk a little bit about value. Value is basically just how dark or how light something is. You can see in this reference image, what would you say is the lightest thing in this reference image? Well, it's most definitely going to be the sky. It's almost always a sky in a daytime landscape, even in a nighttime landscape. And uh, some of these flowers, of course, okay?
but value is the difference or the degree of light or dark something is. And in a landscape, value is typically um, darker in the foreground. I'm not going to write this out. I'm going to put it in a caption. It's darker in the foreground. And it gradually, if we were to do a value scale here, things would be darker. Hard to get them so light. Gradually just keep getting lighter as they go into the distance. I think you get the idea, okay? So they gradually get lighter in the distance. And vertical elements that are perpendicular to the land are almost always darker, I would say always darker, than the landscape, than the land. And those elements even get lighter as they go into the distance. So what that means is trees, they're perpendicular to the horizon line. They're going to be darker in value. But as they recede, they get lighter in value. Now, often photographs don't portray this very well. So we're going to use our artistic license to um, accentuate that principle. It's a real principle of physics, and we can use that to our advantage. So basically what we'll have is we'll have some trees here, just some groupings of trees that are a little closer to us. These feel like they're closer, at least the way their darkness is. And um, you don't want them all the same either. We'll have different tree shapes here. And then we're going to have, of course, some over here. I think I'll make this one closer. I'm gonna bring this tree down. This feels just very straight here. So I'm gonna pull one down just a little further, like it's not at the horizon line. It's a little closer to the viewer. So that one is definitely going to be our darkest value. It's, it's got two things going to make it dark, okay? It's perpendicular to the landscape. It's upright, in other words, and it's the closest thing to the viewer. Now, I'm going to have some trees back here that are what? They're going to get a little lighter in value because they're a little further away, okay? So we've got some here. It's hard to do with this, char this fine charcoal here. And then, like I was saying before, I'm going to choose to just... Um, maybe take another little tree back here somewhere. I'm going to make it even lighter in value. And then finally, I'm going to have some things back here. They're so far away. You just don't even, you can, can't tell if they're trees or mountains or whatever. And they're going to be lighter in, the, in value. So we've got our darkest values here. I'm going to come back and make them darker. Got some trees growing in here. And uh, again, I'm going to accentuate this darkest value up here. So what I've done here is I've taken already a kind of strong composition, just a little darker. They're also darker a little bit at the base. Okay, you know where um, things hang over and it's a little more thick in the middle, a little shadowy underneath, so they're a little darker at the base. So now can you see how I took something that could have just been a, a straight horizon line and also remember this was kind of centered and I've given it more of um, an offset to it, a little bit more in the third. Now, here's what I was saying about the thirds, okay? We've got this kind of already in a third. Um, I'm just gonna make some lines up here so I don't mess up my, my composition. If we were to divide things into thirds here and thirds here, composition, I mean, horizon lines are already kind of there. These aren't exact, but you get the idea. Where do these um, converge? These thirds converge um, right about like in here, this one and this one. And that's about where I have my most distant point is where this third whoops, <laughs> meets this third. You see that? So it's a stronger composition that way. Now, again, I'm going to use some, just some little simple principles of value and pull my viewer in. So I've got um, really just some strong grasses growing here, thick grasses. This is foreground and they get a little bit lighter as they go into the distance, but I'm going to create that path. Here's where, let me, let me show you where I want this path to be. We're gonna come in and around here, kind of like I drew it in, and things are gonna get a little thinner and um, closer together. I talk softer as I go into the distance, that's funny. Um, so now we've just got some value that's working in our favor. Um, some of this is, Coming up, it's a little lighter. These grasses are, see, I do that. I get softer as I start to start moving to the distance. And um, then, of course, we got our sky that's the lightest value. And we've got our land is usually like the next lightest in the distance. Remember our value scale? Things are darker in the foreground. Um, 
This is darker because it's a vertical element and they get um, gradually, think of the landscape now, let's think of the land mass, gradually just a little lighter as they go into the distance. It's hard to do it with this, but you get the idea. So this is darker, deep, deep roots. This will be more, um, a little lighter in value. Also other things that happen is elements, um, especially grasses, they're going to get shorter. You're not going to, they're not going to be as tall. And then eventually they'll get in the distance to where they flatten out. They're more flat like this. Okay. And I have, uh, it's hard with this vine charcoal to get the correct value, but I'll try to accentuate it a little by blending. So you see the ground is more flat. It's receiving the sunlight more, especially when it gets uh, further away. What did we say? Values get lighter. And so that's our general composition, just pulling that viewer in to where we want this um, composition to lead them. And what did I say about the other elements in the painting, like the flowers? We can do the same thing there. Uh, I think I will make some of my grasses even taller in here. And um, then I'm going to take some of the flowers and yeah, bring it way up into this tree line here um, to point. And this will be, I don't have an eraser to erase it, but these will be some flowers that are lighter in value. And so they really are going to show up. They're going to, that's another focal point strategy. It's called contrast of value. If you have something dark next to something light like this, see how these show up so much next to that dark. So we're going to use that principle in here to bring some of these flowers up and I like to think of um, flowers in a field as praising the Lord. And, you know, we call the Lord, he's light and he's love. And so we have like li the lightest uh, distant area right back in here. So it's like some of these elements are just saying, hey, look over here. We're praising the creator and um, just really it's like a dance, like a beautiful dance. And then I like the fact that some of these uh, flowers are larger in the foreground. They're very interesting. They're going to add some focal interest, but you don't want to add so much interest that your viewer gets stuck in this painting, okay? Where they're like, oh, that's so interesting. So another thing, well, we'll talk about, um, we've talked about composition. We'll talk about detail. Detail um, does kind of the same thing as value as far as getting less, okay? We've got uh, more detail in the foreground. Gradually, things get less detail as you go into the distance. Now let's add one in real quickly. These are super basic, but my channel is full of all kinds of more specific descriptions of each of these is, uh, pardon my terrible writing. I'm one of those lefties that I write like this and uh, it's not as easy for me to write like this. Um, but as far as color goes, now I'm just working black and white here. I'll talk more about color as we paint, but it has a similar principle that has to do with distance, okay? All of these have to do with distance zoomed in a little closer to talk about um, value um, and push the point a little bit more by using some lighter pastels here. Uh, again, we mentioned that the sky is one of the lightest things. Um, I've got kind of a, everything's going to be uh, darker than this paper. Okay, keep that in mind. When you're using a, a white surface, almost every pastel will be a little darker. But let's say the sky was like a pretty blue and I've got a little bit lighter blue here. This is where we're going to have our our focal point. So I'm going to add just a, a lighter value right down in here. And this is how I was describing that things on top of dark values. Let me get a darker value pastel and that will help to clarify this. And this flat um, paper here is just drawing paper. So it's not going to allow me to do many types of layering or many levels of layering on here. Um, that's why we use um, surfaces and pastel that are sanded. It allows you to get more layers. So let me just get a little bit of value in here and I'll show you some more principles. I'm covering up what I had previously done. All right, and I got a bump in my board, which you can see now. All right, so we've got um, something dark. Remember, vertical things are darker and these are closer, these trees, so they're darker than they are in the distance. And if we put something light on top of something dark, look at my dirty hands, you can instantly see how it shows up, okay? If I put this, this light on top of something down here, and we do need light elements down here, but they don't get the visual attention. Again, look over here. 
this isn't layered very good, but um, you get the idea. So that you can use to your advantage of bringing some focal interest. Now the values of the grasses are gonna get lighter as we go into the distance. And um, another thing's gonna happen, we're gonna talk more about color temperature um, as I paint, as I get to the actual painting. So we've got values that are getting lighter. I can't help but say it, they get cooler in the distance, okay? So uh, we got our, our middle ground here. I gotta redevelop my trail. And then way in the distance, things get lighter. We're gonna have lighter um, in that field in the distance like this. Let me get my trail in again. We've got our, our underlying trail is just kind of underneath here going back into the distance. And we'll do that with color and value in the painting. And like I said, things get cooler in the distance and I'm pushing this a bit, okay? So I'm taking a color that's cool, it's a blue. But yes, we can, I'll put a little bit of this on it for a nice little transition. But we can make things cooler. It's called aerial perspective. It's literally what happens in nature when things get far away. And have you noticed how mountains uh, start to look uh, uh, blue or purplish in the distance? And that's because you're getting air in between you. Air does have mass and the, enough air gets between you and the distant elements and it cools things off. Things just look cooler. Now I really like this color blue right here. So I'm just gonna, we can, this is another one of those color rules. We can just um, push it a little bit to make our painting just more interesting. I'm gonna lighten this one in the distance a little bit because we're gonna make these the, the trees that are real far away. Another thing we won't get into this video is things get more neutral in the distance. They're not as punchy in color. You can sometimes push that on an element or two just for some interest, but you don't wanna overdo it too much. And uh, let me go ahead and get um, just uh, a little bit of lighter values in some of these trees here. See how all of a sudden they just start feeling further away? As soon as you lighten the value and cool off the color, it's a real easy way to do that. And if you know me, you know I like to do something called color echoing, which is pulling some of the other colors that are in, and these aren't necessarily the colors that I'm gonna use when I paint, but this is a point that it works um, with all kinds of different color palettes, as long as you use the principles in a similar way. So that's a basic concept of how we're gonna take this image, make it a little more exciting, and a little bit more dramatic. Here I'm developing the sketch a little bit further with the use of uh, some warmer colors in the foreground. Notice how I'm layering just a little bit of this uh, green on top of the trees. Also, I'm carving out some of the tree shapes. This is a principle known as painting sky holes and just adding some gestural marks to indicate flower placement. So this is giving me a good feel and a nice little study before beginning the final painting. And you should be able to notice from the sketch I just did and from my color choices here that I'm not sticking to the colors in the reference image. That's the wonderful thing about breaking out your artistic license. I had just done a painting with yellow flowers, so I wanted to make some blue and purple flowers. So I've got a nice selection of some pretty kind of turquoise leaning blues, some greens. Notice the different values. I'm kind of going from dark to light and um, also some beautiful purples, lighter lavenders. Some of these will be used for the sky, some for the flowers, and I have me some uh, darker purples over to the right. I add a few more colors while I paint, but not too many. I do add though some of the J. Luda purples. Really work nicely for final layers. Now the surface I'm using is one I like. It's called Color Fix, made by Art Spectrum. Notice all these colors here. It's called the Rainbow Pack. You don't have to get all these colors. You can buy it in individual sheets. Um, I'm using a color that's called sand. It's just kind of almost like a yellowy, um, creamy color. And I want you to notice Color Fix comes with a little perimeter of white around it. And I like to tape around it. You can see my artist tape up top. I'm gonna continue taping around all of these sides. And at the end of the painting, 
thing, when I peel the tape off, it'll have a nice clean edge. Color Fix paper is sanded, so it's going to allow for multiple layers. Also, it's pretty affordable when it comes to sanded pastel papers. So I have just got my bind charcoal again, and I'm just going to get in my basic sketch. And it's really it's such a great idea to do an initial sketch because you've already done it once before. It just comes a little easier. What I did with those little horizontal lines I made there is giving my um, line of where some of my tree shapes are going to be. Remember how I'm going to have them in layers receding into the distance. I'm getting in my little basic shape for my trail that will recede into the distance. And now I'm going to get in a value study. Using some of these warm pinks that you see to the left here, I think I just used the top three. And I want to get some warmth in. Remember in the sketch how I did this value study with just a piece of charcoal, the vine charcoal. And so now I'm choosing three different values of pinks. I'll talk about why I chose pink in just a minute um, to layer in a basic value study that was the darkest pink there and I got in the things remember value things that are vertical are darker and foreground elements this is the middle value pink it's a little bit brighter a little more saturated in color you can control value a lot by just the pressure that you use as well I was going to use the lighter pink for the distant trees further away but I just used this middle value pink I know that I can layer some lighter pastels on top of it um, to lighten it up and now I've got my middle value pink again and I'm just making some horizontal marks now for that middle ground and I am receding it into the distance and then I'm choosing my lightest value pink that I chose for the most distant parts of the field. Now I'm gonna do something to this that you don't have to do. You could literally just blend this with a piece of pipe foam insulation or a packing peanut works or uh, sometimes depending on your surface, a paper towel will work. Now I grabbed that darker value um, that you saw in the beginning. I said I thought I only used the three, but one was a little bit darker. So I'm just using this one to give that indication of the trail. Remember that we're gonna have a trail. It's gonna be buried a little bit in places, but this is going to give that underlying darker value to give that impression of the trail beneath the grasses. And if you're not using a water-friendly surface, like I said, I suggest you just blend this with some sort of blending tool. Now, I am using a water-friendly surface, so I'm using a technique I love. You've probably seen me do it a lot. That bottle is not body spray. Uh, it's just some alcohol and some water. I have it like a 60-40 mix, 60% alcohol and about 40% water. And I use uh, the type of alcohol is just drugstore alcohol. It's 70% isopropyl alcohol. Now, what on earth am I doing right now? I'm turning this upside down. This is a trick I like to do sometimes if I want to take the effort to peel my painting off or flip my whole board over. And it's a way to develop... Um, some drips. I'm just spraying on this alcohol, um, not so much that it's uh, just so saturated and drippy, but a few drips are okay. And I'm letting it drip in my favor. You know, trees grow up and those uh, grasses are reaching up. So why not let the alcohol, if you flip it over, uh, drip in a way that's really going to um, accentuate that feeling. And now you can see as I'm spraying this with the alcohol, how some of those new pastels, the pink pastels I put down, really do get more vibrant um, when you add the alcohol. Now, when they dry, they're going to dry a little bit lighter. But what this is going to do is not only create a dreamy underpainting, um, it's going to take away some of that um, the that yellowy sand color of the paper showing through everywhere and it's just going to be softer and we're creating a value study a value of color that we have underneath our painting to um, really establish that groundwork to begin our painting now like i said i wanted to uh mention why I chose this color. You saw from my palette, it's a lot of cool colors, kind of like I chose in my little sketch that I did. Um, but I'm turning it back over now to get some of the middle ground of the land there. Um, but everything was so cool in the color choices of the pastels that I wanted to give a little bit of a color contrast 
to the painting. And I think you'll see when I start adding the pastels, how this pinkish um, magenta color really does influence the painting and give it just more pizzazz. All right, so now I'm just uh, continuing with my um, brushing on or spraying on of the alcohol and brushing the painting and uh, just getting that trail a little bit more um, definition there. And now I'm just really gonna start developing these grasses. They The drips kind of uh, got a little thick in some of the areas, so I'm gonna work a little bit just to blend them out a little bit more. When I speed it up like this, you can kind of see how I'm able to spray and manipulate the color with a loose and energetic feel. When this is dry, you see we have a nice dreamy beginning to get started. And now it's time to start applying soft pastel. Now the content you're gonna see here on the Monet Cafe channel uh, from here forward is sped up a bit, but I'm going to give you many pastel painting tips and techniques. If you would like the full version with slower content and full commentary, you might consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. It's really easy and affordable. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel it anytime. What I love about it is it's really a beautiful community of artists all learning and growing together. And I actually get to see you, your work. We have many sharing platforms. So come join the family. But I also have lots of free content here on the Monet Cafe channel as well. Before proceeding to the pastel painting portion of this lesson, I wanted to ask you guys if you would like, I guess, a part two to this pastel painting 101 course as a product recommendation for new pastel artists. And I would love to bring that to you guys, but I would love to get your comments as well. And just so you know, I do have an Amazon storefront and I have many pastel products and recommendations. I'm gonna provide a link to my uh, Amazon shop, I call it, and this is it you're looking at here. And let me just show you around a little bit in case you wanna check it out. I have multiple little categories here. Uh, this is probably the best one to look at, which is um, different categories, like you can look at my videos. I have quite a few videos. These are the videos right here that you can just look at some of the brands that I recommend and uh, have done a little uh, product review on. Now this one I would say is probably a good one. It's called Idea List, right? there. And I have one category that's called beginner basics for pastel artists. I'll, I'll make a link just for that one too. So when you click that one, um, it will show you some of the products that are available on Amazon. Now they are available on other sites as well. A retailer I recommend is dickblick.com and you can find multiple different pastel products that are affordable. And one that I recommend a lot, once you know you're getting a little bit serious, it might sound like a lot at first, but it is one of the best values for this quality of soft pastels. It's the Sennelier, it's a French company and a gorgeous quality pastel. And and it is 120 half sticks. It's not a full stick. And I love these little half sticks. They're just the right size. And it's 120 of them for $160. I have seen this price as low as like 128 one time, but this is still such a great value. They also have a 40 set of Sennelier pastels. I don't know if that one's on Amazon, but it's on Dick Blick, but that's a great set to start with. Um, and uh, again, once you know you're a little serious about it, but there are some other more affordable brands as well. So check that out. I also have some of the papers I recommend. This is the one that we're using um, today Day, which is the Art Spectrum Color Fix. Remember, I'm using the sand color, and I believe my sheet is 9 by 12, and it is the uh, original coating. It's a little more textured. They also have a smooth coating as well. So again, check that out, but let me know if you would like me to create a video kind of just breaking down some of these different pastel painting products that might help the beginner artist. All right, let's get to this painting. I'd like to reinforce the importance of this underpainting. It 
truly is giving us a great starting point with the values and the general composition. I first begin layering with some of my darker values. I want to establish that path that I mentioned and some of the darker elements such as the trees. Remember, vertical elements are almost always darker in a landscape. And I am layering in the distance some beautiful lavenders that will serve as a shadowy color. And I'm adding some foresty greens on top of the darker pastels. Now this is an example, sometimes when I speed it up, you can see it actually more clearly, um, of the layering capability and effectiveness of soft pastels. We're not painting like a paint by number, filling in areas with one single color. Color. This gentle layering of soft pastels is creating a tapestry of color that's interacting with each other and it is truly what gives it its vibrancy and its color um, charisma and pizzazz. And see I just added some beautiful like turquoise blues to the distant trees and I'm sprinkling it down into the landscape. This is called color echoing and I will layer over those trees. They look kind of weird right now. Oh by the way right now I'm blending with a packing peanut. It's just a um, um, something that comes in your packages to protect them and I am cleaning it off in between each kind of basic color and it really just softened my landscape and what I was saying about the blue trees in the distance they might look a little strange right now but I have the value right and I wanted that coolness to push them back remember cooler colors recede into the distance so later you'll see me layer um, some other colors on top of that very gently to neutralize that color also so when you're first starting out with pastel painting, sometimes we feel the, the need to just really fill in the tooth of that paper. Things look a little um, chunky and textured to begin with, but resist that urge because just like you can see in the sky here, the pastels will eventually start to blend themselves. So really resist that urge to have a lot of hard pressure when you're painting. And you'll notice that I'm bringing more of the blue down into some areas of the land. My reasoning for that is there are areas where there's more shadow. The sun is at the distant end of that road, that little path, and behind these trees there's some shadow and even their shadow is kind of casting down onto the land. So I'm just using my artistic license. I know that shadows cool things off. I always say we cool off in the shade and so do colors. So you don't always have to use the colors that you see in a reference image. That's great news for beginner pastel artists because we don't always have the budget to get all of the colors that you want or desire and trust me when you start painting with soft pastels you really want every color but there are advantages to having a limited palette you have to get more creative with color notice too that thus far I have not created a lot of detail resist the urge to create a lot of detail as well if you like that painterly and impressionistic look now I'm adding some lighter highlights to the distance that's going to kind of intensify a little focal point to lead the viewer back to that uh, down that path towards the sun and now it's time to get in some of these flowers as you can see I am not following the reference image my last tutorial was some yellow orangey yellow flowers so I wanted to do something different I had kind of a cool palette of colors so I decided on some purple bluish flowers I'm getting in just some basic flower shapes and uh, gesture I should say remember from the beginning of this tutorial I want my flower um, expression and gestures to uh, influence the viewer to lead them into this painting and uh, strengthen this composition. So I'm making some marks just to get my idea of how the flowers are going to pull the viewer in. This purple worked great for some of the shadowy areas in the landscape. Again, a nice gentle touch and I'm continuing to develop, develop the flowers. I start out dark if you notice. Now I'm holding my board right here because I'm pressing kind of hard. Um, when I get closer to the end of a painting, I can make my final marks of punctuation that are going to also intensify 
the focal point energy. I'm using some beautiful purple, purplish blue colors from the J. Luda Pastel Company. And I have some exciting news about that that I'll be announcing soon. But notice I'm making some of my flower shapes larger now and also kind of pointing into the focal point direction. I didn't like that line. I had like four flowers diagonally in a line there. We want to avoid patterns when painting things like flowers and grasses and keep it very spontaneous. So I broke up that little uh, patterned kind of area by making one of the flowers larger. So I'm adding just some pretty little white flowers. Again, some of them reaching up into the tree line that gives that value contrast. If you remember from the beginning of this lesson, one of them I didn't like right where it was, but there's an example. You can just brush out um, what you don't want with a stiff bristle brush and layer again on top. So this painting was just a beautiful experience for me. I love Loved the color palette and the subject matter. Now at this point, I actually kind of like the painting like this. I like things a little unfinished, but I decided to add some grasses and I'm not adding too many grasses like you think of vertical linear grasses, but I do add a few coming up soon. And I think you can notice at this stage, notice the trees. They started out like with dark values and then some really blues in the distance probably didn't even make any sense. But now can you see how this layering, this gentle layering, focusing mostly on getting the values right and gently layering colors on top of each other. And don't feel like you're gonna get this right away. You're not, I didn't. I was so frustrated, I almost quit pastel painting. So now I'm getting a few more little um, vertical blades. I've had a tendency in the past to overdo this and I'm trying really hard not to. I like a painting that doesn't have too much detail. And so some of these flowers are gonna be buried. I don't want them to feel like they're pasted on top. So I'm gonna use some pastels to just kind of cover up some of the um, flowers like I'm doing here. And this is another Prismacolor new pastel. They're longer, that one that you just saw, um, like I used for the underpainting, for the pink underpainting. Now, just a few more uh, flowers that I wanted to identify more like the flowers in the reference image to have a bit more of a, a species type of flower. So I just uh, developed a few of them further. Here I've zoomed in, I took it outside with better lighting. Can you see the influence of the underpainting peeking through in areas? I don't cover up all of that underpainting and it really creates this beautiful pink glow and warmth beneath the painting. And now I wanna show you what I mentioned at the beginning about how I taped this painting around the perimeter um, on top of that little white edge that Color Fix um, by Art Spectrum, this particular paper has. And if I pull the tape up, very gently and away from the painting like I'm doing here and I have this sped up a little bit but do it slowly so you don't pull up any of the paper a little bit of the underpainting bled through you know most likely I'm gonna frame this but I still like those clean edges I'll have a link to the reference image in the description of this video, along with some of the products that I used and recommended products for beginner artists. Like I said, become a patron if you would like the full version of this lesson with slower speeds and full commentary, but I have hundreds of free lessons here on the Monet Cafe channel as well. All right, everyone, I pray you learned a lot. As always, God bless and happy painting.